Oh, hey. Wanna... Wanna see something cool? Impact frames. If you're into doing any sort of stylized animations, or animations with a lot of action and sick kung fu moves, or if you just need to anime like a nerd, <laughs> don't look there, you're probably aware of the concept of impact frames. It's a super efficient way of conveying the release of power, commonly in someone's face. Usually if you want to include impact frames in your animations, you would have to use some other software besides Blender to create them, like Krita, MS Paint, or Photoshop. But I came up with a completely new way to do it fully in Blender, using a secret ingredient. And I think you can guess what it is. It, it, it's geometry notes. Yay! Here's how I did it. I wanted to create a camera overlay with a material that can display information collected from the scene in real time. So I started with a grid, since it has dynamic settings for both size and mesh resolution. This will be important for later. Then I used the location and rotation of the camera to make the grid follow the camera at all times. With an offset that places the grid in front of it. But how do I get data from the scene, you might ask? Why, by the dark magic of raycasting, of course. The raycast node has a few different outputs, but the most important one in this case is the isHit output. Basically, it will return a 0 for false if nothing is hit, and a 1 for true if something is hit. If we think of those values as colors, 0 would be black and 1 would be white, which is perfect for impact frames. So to raycast, all you need is something for the rays to hit, and a direction for the rays to be cast at. I usually set it up like this, where I have a collection containing all the things that I want to be included in the impact frame. So in this example I have Suzanne, the amazing monkey head, a cube, and myself in one collection. And the ground and this hypercube that keeps randomly appearing in another collection. And in the node tree I just drag in the impact collection with these settings. Add a Realize Instances node to treat the objects as real geometry, and use that as the target geometry. Unless you specify otherwise, the rays will be cast from the mesh that contains the Geometry Nodes modifier, which in this case would be the grid. But using the normals of the grid wouldn't actually work. Why? Well, let me show you. If the rays are cast along the grid normals, it would only hit a very small portion of the camera's view. So the result would be a zoomed-in, small piece of the camera's view. So instead we need to cast the rays as if they were cast from the camera position towards each face or point of the grid. Luckily, calculating that direction for each point is just simple vector subtraction, where we subtract the grid positions from the camera position, and that's what you can use as the ray direction. Now this node stores the hit information under the hit name. And after setting the material like this, the hit attribute can be accessed in that material. Why does it look so bad, you ask? Well, remember when I said that the grid resolution is important, and that the grid is basically a display? Well, each face of the grid acts like an individual pixel. So higher resolutions means more detail, but also lower performance. So ideally you would set it low when playing in the viewport, and high once it's time to render. Once the information is in the material, you can use all the regular shader tools to create cool impact effects, by mixing and combining procedural textures with it. In some cases I also store the hit normals, for even more mixing capabilities.
But how did I get from this boring look to this? Well, that's the beauty of this setup. You can actually paint extra details in 3D. I usually do it procedurally by instancing curves and circles and converting them to meshes, but you could also just do it manually in the scene. All you really need is a couple of planes that you extrude out from the impact location. And distort with a displacement modifier. As long as these objects are in a separate collection, contained within the impact collection, you can keyframe the render visibility to only be visible during the impact. And if you don't like the idea of this 3D drawing approach, you could still draw the impact frames in some other software, and use the rendered frame as a starting point. Alright, I think that's it. I'm gonna go punch stuff. See ya!